May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always faithful and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, last week, Ken and Stephen decided to steal the first part of my sermon, (laughs) pointing to one of my favorite symbols of Christianity, the anchor. The anchor, since the earliest days of the church, has been a symbol of hope. Hope in God. The anchor holds the ship fast in the midst of the storm. The anchor does not keep the ship from facing the storm, but guarantees its safety throughout it. Our hope, our hope as Christians is in our relationship with God. It is that God loves us, not because of who we are or what we've done, but in spite of some of what we've done and failed to do. God loves us because we are created in the divine image, filled with the Holy Spirit, and because it is God's will to love us. Our value comes from that truth of God's love, and nothing, as Paul says, can ever separate us from it. This is the anchor that we need to hold fast to. We live in changing times. That truth that I just articulated about God's love is not something that many agree. We've seen the numbers, right? Fewer and fewer people identify as Christians. And even within the church, there are those that would not ascribe the same understanding of God's radical, abundant, and inclusive love that we understand, profess, and live out. We stand in the midst of these forces. And it can be easy individually or collectively at times to lose hope, to lose that hope. But we shouldn't. Because the truth of God's love for us is not up for a vote. It's not true because so many people believe it or not. It is true because it is. It's true because we have experienced it in our life. We hold on to this hope Because as Christians, we have a long game. In these words from the wisdom of Solomon, we see the vision for what it means to hold fast to the truth of God's love and to share that love with others. Then the righteous will stand with great confidence in the presence of those who have oppressed them and those who make light of their labors. When the unrighteous see them, they will be shaken with dreadful fear. And they will be amazed at the unexpected salvation of the righteous. They will speak to one another in repentance and anguish of spirit, and they will groan. These are the persons whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach. Fools that we were. Continuing on. What has our arrogance profited us? And what good has our boasted wealth brought us? All those things have vanished like a shadow and like a rumor that passes by. 
This vision is a vision to inspire us to hold fast to the truth of God's foundational love. One who understood this notion of the long game was Saint Mother Teresa. One day, a group of evangelical Christians came to see her and her work in India. And they asked her, perhaps with a bit of judgment, why, why, why do you put out all of this effort for these people who are not Christians, who are not saved? And Mother Teresa patiently responded, Well, one day they will meet our Lord and Savior. And when they see him, they will say, Ah, I know you because I saw you in the woman who cared for me as I died. I saw you in the woman who fed me when I could not feed myself. Our love, our radical understanding of God's abundant and transforming love is true and real and makes a difference here and now. sharing a few stories from across the lake where I serve. St. Augustine's in Benton Harbor, a church with about 25 on Sunday. For years, the Sunday school collected money and then they'd find some little cause to give it to at the end of the year. And about three years ago, they said, we want to build a tiny house. Sunday school half a dozen kids. Thankfully, the adults believed in the theory of saying yes. And so over the two, three years, they raised the money. And the first resident of that house has now moved in. The love of God has created a home. In Emmanuel Petoskey in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula, congregation of about 80 to 100 on Sunday, discovered about four or five years ago that the local food pantry's backpack program only provided food for kids in need through elementary school as if teenagers don't get hungry on the weekends. And so Emmanuel started, they started a food pantry in one of the middle schools, and, and in four years, with the help of others in the community, there are now four food pantries in two middle schools, a high school and the court-ordered school. And each week, over a hundred kids are served food for the weekend that would not otherwise have food. A hundred. That is more than the church is serving at the communion rail on Sunday morning. St. Luke's Kalamazoo, church roughly the size of the cathedral, with the benefit of putting in the work to raise funds from some of the local foundations is now on track, I have just learned, to distribute 600,000 diapers next year to families in need in Kalamazoo. And what each of these families in Kalamazoo and Petoskey and Menton Harbor, what they know is they have been seen in their need 
They have been seen to have value. They have seen to be cared by someone else. The love of God, no matter how unreasonable it ever is, is abundant and life-giving. Through your meals ministry, Summer in the City, and other ministries here, you are changing lives. Through your presence, folks who are seeking God of all ages are finding a place where they can experience God's love in their life. Tonight and this whole last week, we have been celebrating the great saints with a capital S and the blessed souls and personal saints of our individual lives who have taught us of God's love, who have taught us that we are of value. They have offered us not only knowledge of, but an experience of the anchor that is God's love. Now on this night and in this day, it is time for us, like Elisha, to pick up the mantle, to share the good news no matter the cost, to through our words and our actions communicate to individuals in this hurting and broken world that God's love is true and real. And in communicating that message, we can help others find the anchor to weather the storm that they face. Together, we can be healed and discover the depths of God's joy and healing presence. Amen.